Howdy heck and hello H2O's Roller Bros and I Cheerios alike. I'm your guide Key. We're going to be looking at some uh, stories from this Ask Reddit thread asking people to share their nice guy stories. And also coming soon is going to be a video where I go over some nice guy songs or at least lyrics that I wrote back in late middle school, early high school and posted to Facebook to get the attention of this girl that I was into. Actually, initially the origin story is that I was talking to this girl and then I wrote her a song to ask her out, which went very very badly and I, I might tease it a little bit at the end of this video so stick around for that but also look out for a video later this week where I go over some of these songs I explain what I was going through I explain the mentality and and the reasons why I thought this was a good idea so let me know if you're interested I'm definitely doing it but let me know how you feel about it and let's get into these other people's stories on this ask reddit thread did I even intro that we were doing an ask reddit thread of people's nice guys stories because that's what we're doing and we're getting into it right now a male coworker reported another male coworker to HR for inappropriate behavior towards me. Except there was no inappropriate behavior, he was just jealous of the new boy and how well we got along. Well, I confronted him and asked why he did that because it could really hurt the other dude's standing. He gave a flaky excuse and I was cold to him for the rest of the shift. The next day I came in to find that he had made me a crown out of cardboard and a cardboard sign that said Stacy's Castle. Colored the and everything. He presented them to me like it was the best thing he could have done and it fixed everything. Spoiler, it did not fix everything and now I was pissed and weirded out. This is like a reoccurring theme with nice guys. They're just bad people, I think, is they're, they're never willing to work on themselves. They just want to make other people look bad to the point of being like, oh, you and this other guy are getting along well. Let me get him fired from his job and possibly make him face legal repercussions in order to make me the only man that has a chance with you or something like that. This is ridiculous, and even in my worst nice guy days, I wouldn't have done something this bad. I worked with him. We had an evening shift at a public library where for the last two hours it was just the two of us on. It's also deadly quiet. There's no reason for us to be open, honestly. After a few months of working the shift together, we got into a routine of sitting at the two information desks and emailing each other links to weird Wikipedia articles. Like a competition to see who could find the weirdest one. He was mostly okay. He had a whole weeaboo thing going on which got tedious at times, but he pulled his weight at clothes, which many of my past colleagues on that shift had not done, and was generally pleasant, so eh. Then one day, he brought me a rose and asked me to the Japanese film festival a local cinema was putting on. I said that that wouldn't be very appropriate given that I was married, and he sulked and stomped and spent the rest of the evening muttering about, you be heckin' nice to girls and this is what you get. But he knew I was married. There was a period where my car was caught in a hailstorm and was being repaired for two weeks. During that time, my husband came and picked me up from work. Also, our friendly interactions were limited to work talk and emailing Wikipedia articles about weird deep water fish or tiny national parks, so I don't know how he got a she's interested from that. The next few months were just crappy on that shift because he sulked and moped and banged books around and stopped doing anything on clothes despite it actually being his job. Then he went to Japan to teach English and I now work this shift with a different guy who doesn't bring me flowers or make things awkward or interpret talk about system upgrades as flirting. Also, he brings Uno cards, so winner winner. Okay, so my first thought with this one is like this dude thinks there's some sort of like Jim and Pam romance romance going on between the two of them and even though maybe he knows she's married maybe he just ignored it and didn't want to accept that she was married he thought he had a chance he thought he could win her heart and uh, it's just so disgusting to see a guy act like this like get over it man i'm guessing that both of these people are adults i mean they didn't describe age but for some reason i got some vibe that they're generally older people like not in high school or something like that but you got to get out of this attitude dude your life is going to be very miserable had a guy friend who was crushing hard on me. I was married at the time, although it was on the rocks, so I told him it wasn't happening. Then the divorce process started and he figured he was in like Flynn. After the finalization, I did agree to a couple of dates, but realized early in that I wasn't feeling it at all, partly because, oh, you know, I had just gotten out of a really bad marriage. I told him I wasn't on the same page and he had a hissy fit. I can't believe you aren't giving me a real chance after I've waited so long for you and I would treat you so much better than your ex, but you won't even allow me the opportunity to show you. 
his perspective seemed to be that because he liked me, I needed to give him a shot regardless of my own feelings. I held my ground and said that we could be friends or we could be former friends. Nothing else. He decided friends was good enough. A while later, he had to have some medical testing done and would be in the hospital overnight under observation. He admitted to me that he was petrified and asked me to keep him company to help calm his nerves. His family all lived two states away, so I agreed to come sit with him. I brought a book and read aloud to him. We watched some TV and chatted. I finally went home around 1 a.m. The next day, he called me to tell me that the testing had gone well and that his result was good. I congratulated him and made getting off the phone noises, but he said, So now we're more than just friends, right? It would seem that he believed that because I spent the evening with him at the hospital, that I must have feelings for him. I explained that what I'd done for him, I would have done for pretty much any of my friends who needed it. I then said that maybe trying staying friends wasn't such a good idea. He said, You can't do this to me right after a trauma. I've been through hell. You need to at least try being my girlfriend for a month. I don't remember exactly what the testing was at the hospital, but it involved the nurse coming in every hour or so to check something. I'd leave the room for it to give him privacy. When I'd return, he didn't appear particularly traumatized. Somehow, every interaction I had with him made him more and more unattractive to me. After a while, I didn't even want to be friends with him anymore. That makes perfect sense, honestly. So this might not make sense to people that haven't suffered from either nice guy or nice girl syndrome, but this is actually a pretty common thing that happens where you feel like you need to convince someone to be interested in you. Like when I was a nice guy back in the day, I didn't really understand the concept of spark. Like I knew that I fell for people and I, I, I was interested in them and I had feelings for them and stuff, but I, I thought that over time they could fall for me. And that does happen in certain cases, but a lot of the time it's like either they know that they're into you or they know that they're not into you. And for a lot of nice guys or nice girls they just refuse to accept that completely and in my experience it leads to them spending more and more time fixated on this person because they think they can convince them to like them or they think that if they were just given a trial period in a relationship which is not really a thing but like that's what this guy referenced I remember myself thinking the exact same thing that like if they just gave me a chance to be their boyfriend if they just gave me like a little demo like a little like week long period of being their boyfriend I could show them that I'd be the best boyfriend but it just doesn't work like that and like I said before, it's just going to lead to you getting more and more interested in this person, becoming obsessed with it, spending more time, and looking like a worse nice girl or nice guy. So if you find yourself doing any of these things, just learn to cut it off, give up. Like, sometimes it's okay to quit, and this is one of those situations. It's just going to make you look bad. It's just going to increase your nice guy syndrome, so just get out of it and move on. Which leads me to my own nice guy past and the songs. So I'm going to tell you guys the story in a future video that I'm doing that's hopefully coming out this week of like the setup to this situation but just for some a little bit of a teaser today I posted 19 songs on Facebook 18 of which were pretty much directed at this person just talking about my heartbreak and how upset I was and uh yeah so it's pretty bad here's an example of one of them and this this hurts me to read this hurts me deeply I, I enjoy talking about it because it is is funny and I do like to reflect on it so in the comments don't be like oh why'd you have to expose this if you didn't want to like I enjoy doing it but it does make me cringe beyond belief so this one's called exhale and keep in mind, all of these songs were posted to my public Facebook account intending for this girl to see it, but also for everybody else I was friends with to see it. Can you see the future? Neither can I. I'm already lost inside the lies. All this problems you make on the outs... <laughs> All these problems you make on the outside, you're beautiful. It's the inside I can't take. Can you even see what you've done to me? All the pain can't make it go away. So what's the truth? When I see your pretty face, I think about the ha <laughs> <laughs> So what's the truth? When I see your pretty face, I think about your heart and the black hole that's in its place. So forget me, let me go, I'm history for all you know. You never care, what does it matter? My heart's not there, my memories are shattered. 
So back to the killer chorus. Can you even see what you've done to me? All the pain can't make it go away. So what's the truth? When I see your pretty face, I think about your heart and the black hole that's in its place. It's so sad when I think about you. All the old times. The sky's all blue. You were so caring, but I forgot. You never cared. So why should I? We both know why. Because I had a fucking heart. What? what? That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Alright, back to the chorus. Can you even see what you've done to me? All the pain can't make it go away. So what's the truth? When I see your pretty face, I think about your heart and the black hole that's in its place. The, I, it's like I wasn't even thinking about the rhythm, like, and the black hole in its place would have sounded so much better than the black hole that's in its place. Just, uh, just terrible songwriting. You don't know how you've brought me sorrow. Never mattered to you what you put me through. This lovely 45 keeps the old <laughs> memories alive. What? Why? Why do I have to bring up a 45? What am I doing with the 45? How is it helping me keep the memories alive? I don't know how that works. I guess I shoot myself and that keeps the old memories alive. Why can't you just remember them and stay alive, you idiot? So yeah, I don't know what I was intending to achieve with this song. I guess just pure trying to make someone feel bad for you. That was the main intention. I was just a 15-year-old idiot that thought that if you made somebody feel bad for you, they'd be interested in you or something. And believe it or not, this is not the edgiest song I put out. Maybe it's it's up there, but there are... This, I think this is number like 16 of 19, so this is somewhere in the middle of the entire fiesta <laughs> not a fiesta fiasco i guess you could call it so yeah it gets worse it gets better um we will do more of these later in time but for now skate on to the best of your abilities let me know what you thought of this song and if you're excited for more extremely cringy extremely edgy extremely terribly written songs from me i'll see you soon skate on to the best of your abilities make sure you're drinking more water have an absolutely fantastic day and don't do stuff like this